Hi everyone, this is John Gearhart with Wallsworth Yearbooks, and this is an additional tutorial that can be watched before or after you work on the assignment for learning online design in 20 steps. You'll notice here that I am on the FrontierYearbookTeam.com website, and this is the page for uh, how to use the 20 steps to master online design. And there's also this creating design consistency page that works with templates. And we're going to talk about templates primarily in this tutorial because I want to demonstrate how much easier it is to work with templates as opposed to starting from scratch to create the boxes and design your content. So this page will look familiar if you've already completed the assignment. And the assignment basically takes you from start to finish creating a spread. Now hopefully uh, you guys were able to get through that. Some of you may have found it a little bit challenging, especially if you've never designed from scratch before. But the goal here is to show you all of the little techniques that you can use within online design. However, what we wanna do now is just show you how much easier it will be once you've got that created to use a template. Over here, you can click on the little T for templates, and we have all of these templates that are in here for you. And you can only see about three at a time. If you um, look in your kit, or if you go to support download, which is all the way at the bottom here in members only, you can download the online design template catalog and the online design total design catalog, which has all of the templates in it and is a whole lot easier uh, to look at than the actual website. The total design we'll talk a little bit about. You know, this is a great resource because it takes actual award-winning books and it gives you those templates. Now, all of these templates can be pulled apart. You don't have to use them the, the way that they are set up, but you can change them and alter them in pretty much any way that you want, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, let me show you how much easier it would have been to create the spread from the example if we had started with a template. I created a custom template, and all you do once you pick a template that you like is you just drag and drop it onto the spread, and voila, I already have all of the boxes, I have the spacing I need, I have the um, text boxes that I need, and now all I need to do is just go in here and add in the correct pictures. Okay, and I am basically done. Of course, if you watched the other tutorial, you'll see how you can resize all of these elements and how to make that look exactly as it's supposed to. And of course, we'll still need to cut this out, which you know you can do by double clicking and going to the clip, clipping path. You'll either need to move those points and then uh, by using this tool right here and then adding points so that you can cut them out or click clear path and just go ahead and trace that whole area and cut it out yourself. Either way, um, those are both options for you. Okay, so also in the template, you know, the color isn't in here and these do not have the gradient in it. So if, you know, you wanted to go that route, you would need to change that within the template. And that's how all of our templates are set up. They're all going to be set up as basically black and white, and then you can go in and change all of it. With the exception of the total design templates, those actually do have a color scheme with them. But just to demonstrate a little bit more with the templates, all you need to do is drag and drop them onto the page, and then you can use them. Feel free to go through all of these different categories, and you can use these little modular templates and combine them with other templates if you want. You can further customize these templates by changing things out. Perhaps you don't want this long of a story or caption here. You could change that and add another uh, picture right here or whatever you wanted to do 
and just make sure you know it looks good with that template. And you can just go up here and go to File, Save as Custom Template, and save this as a new template that you can use on another page or in another section or something like that. I'm going to go to another spread where I've pulled a, a couple of different templates together to create a brand new look. Okay, this looks pretty good, right? Um, the color scheme might not be working and that's okay because all of these um, custom templates are editable. If you see, look, I can change that. So that is a fantastic option here. Um, you know, it works on, on any of these. So you'll see uh, that we can, we can do some really great things here. I'm going to go ahead and undo those changes just because I liked it that way. Now, all I did here, I'm going to move all this stuff off to the side so we can see what I did. Almost all of this is from a template. Okay. I went to, I want to be heard express. And I just pulled several of these things that I kind of liked out onto the canvas. And I think it's best to sort of position some of these kind of where you would like them to go when you pull them out. Because otherwise, many times when you pull these onto the page, they all kind of bunch up in the section. And if a particular template has a lot of different elements to it, Sometimes they can get lost or they, can, um, uh, they won't be grouped together anymore. So it is a good idea to kind of move things where you would want it to be. I think that was down here. So this over here. This is a good example of all of those individual pieces. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do object group so that all of that stays together and I don't lose some of the text off on another page. Once I get ready to edit this, I can ungroup it and then edit the individual pieces. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and um, work on part of what I had designed here. I made a large dominant photo because that's you know part of our um, design principles is to have a dominant photo. And then I'm going to change the layout here so that I can bring this forward. Making this quite a bit smaller here. And there was also a box underneath of that. Okay, now uh, I think this was a little bit lower, and what else did we have on here? Okay, um, that's a loud crowd, and then the Republican versus Democrat thing. So I'm going to go back up here to the templates. Okay, so then I pulled this one onto the page, and I actually edited this particular little module a little bit. I went ahead and got rid of that box because I didn't need two pictures, I just needed the one. And I believe I moved this down some. And um, then I put a, a box here just to signify that this would be a caption. And I think that pretty much um, looks pretty similar to, to what I came up with. What I really want to emphasize here is the purpose of doing the online design 20 steps tutorial is so that you really learn how to use the grid and how to use the XY coordinates and the width and height. It's crucial that you understand that the, the reason we use that is so that if we're going to use a template on multiple pages that we get the items in the exact same space as they're supposed to be and make sure that they're the same size. If um, 
if you're following all of the spacing guidelines as well, you can see here that this, unless this uh, little module relates directly to this photo, it's a little too close here, at least in comparison to what's down here. Remember that you can go up to View, Page Settings, and you can turn on your grids and that sort of thing so you can see how many picas you are supposed to be from the other objects. And you can see how wide exactly your caption is supposed to be. Don't forget, as a rule, we don't usually have borders on our photos or uh, text boxes for that matter. And that is why we went through the tutorial the way that we did, showing you the x and y coordinates and using the width and height uh, properties. So I hope that didn't confuse anybody. So I just want to make it clear, you didn't have to pull all of these items together to make this template. You could have simply just used one of the already pre-designed templates, either from the total design category or just from our regular templates. So don't think that you have to create your own here. You could have very easily just went and used one of these full, already pre-designed templates. Again, these are the exact designs and spreads that were in the published award-winning yearbook. So if you do use one of these pre-designed templates or you create your own, either way, when you make these objects, you should definitely take note of their position, their x and y coordinates, because even though you might use the same template on multiple pages, it's certainly possible that you might accidentally move this. And sure, you can just click undo because there are unlimited undos available to you, but what if you just accidentally move it and you didn't even realize it? then there is no way for you to go back and undo that specific thing. So instead of just trying to eyeball where it's supposed to go, you can reference the XY coordinates and simply type that in. That is, again, why we went through that so meticulously, because it is so important. So if you guys have further questions about how to use the online design templates or how to create consistency within your book, please don't forget to check out the full YouTube channel and also the Frontier Yearbook Team website for additional information.